How's it going everyone? Tony Maritato here. Welcome to the Total Knee Replacement Support Group. If you're watching this on YouTube, welcome to the YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about some of the most common challenges I hear of regarding patients who have had a total knee replacement and getting in and out of bed, positioning in bed, and just trying to get a decent night's sleep. Sleep is one of the most important components of your recovery, and I feel like we're not spending enough time getting you to sleep better. The better quality your sleep, the better quality your recovery. So let's talk about a couple of things. First off, there's usually two common scenarios that I see in a patient's home following a knee replacement. Either the bed is too high or the bed is too low. Now, obviously, you know, if the bed is too high, you bring in a little step. If the bed is too low, there's some challenges getting out of bed. Um, but I want to talk about some positioning that you can get into to maybe optimize for sleep. Some of the common myths and misconceptions around what you should do, what you shouldn't do. But as a precursor to that, to that I need to say, if your surgeon said, don't do something, then don't do it. The surgeon knows what hardware they put in. The surgeon knows the limitations and the problems and the complications that are common for the condition. So listen to your surgeon. These are just some ideas, some information. I've never met you. Unfortunately, I can't make specific recommendations for you. This is purely for educational purposes. So let's talk about a couple of ways to get in and out of a tall bed since I've got a tall mat here. One of my favorite, typically what I see is maybe a patient on the shorter side and the bed is on the higher side and maybe they don't have a step stool around to help them get in and out. A lot of times if the knee, let's say in this case my left knee was the replaced knee, the patient will back up to the bed and they'll have a really hard time getting that leg up. Even if they do get seated, they really struggle to get that leg up and into bed. So one of the ways that I, we've kind of played around with that seems to work well for the right person is you've got your walker. You bring your walker right up alongside. Again, we're assuming the left is the replaced side. I kind of park my walker out of the way and I'm going to call this the dive and roll method because basically what you're doing is you're coming to the bed, you're going belly first onto the bed. If you can't support on the surgical leg, you're just going to switch, right? Just because the headboard is at that end doesn't mean I could, can't put my head at the other end of the bed. So what I would do is I would come to the foot of the bed. I dive onto it essentially and most clients in my experience have a much easier time lifting the leg behind them than they do in front. So I come into the bed, I lay down and I roll to my side. Now one of the things that typically um, has been comfortable traditionally for patients is if the surgical side is laying against the surface of the mattress. And the reason why is because the mattress is relatively flat and that allows the leg to remain in a neutral alignment. What happens is when you first lay down, if you have a sideways stress on the knee, right? So let's pretend for, for a moment that I'm laying on my side and I've got something pushing up on the foot that's creating that lateral stress on the knee. That becomes uncomfortable, no doubt about it. Or if the knee is supported, but there's nothing supporting the ankle and I've got an opposite lateral stress, again, that becomes very uncomfortable. But if I can get into position where the bed is flat and I'm sidelined, so in this case, we're gonna switch. We're gonna pretend it's my right knee that had the replacement. I'm sidelined. The leg essentially is straight from a side to side perspective. Now the knee may be bent, the knee may be straight, that is a level of comfort depending on your range of motion. But if you're normally a side sleeper and this is your most comfortable position, I will always choose better quality sleep and then work on my range of motion during the day because that's really the time that you're gonna get the most improvement. So let's talk about pillows for a minute. If we're looking at 
optimizing the position and we've already established that the bottom leg, the leg that's on the bed is going to be the replace side. So either I put my head at the other end of the bed or whatever you need to do to get it so that the replace side is down, you have a couple options. So now most commonly patients also have a history of low back pain, maybe they have some hip pain, maybe they have some other issues. So the most common scenario is a folded pillow between the knees, the bed, the mattress is supporting the surgical leg, the folded pillow is supporting the non-surgical leg, obviously I have my pillow under my head, and this is my sleeping position. Sometimes if there's too much discomfort up into the thigh and the hip, what you can try and I don't have enough pillows with me today, I apologize, but I can put a pillow underneath the rib cage and then one to two pillows under my head. So what this does, hopefully you guys can see it in the video, this starts to distribute the weight from my hip. If I have hip bursitis or any kind of lateral hip pain, IT band pain, this starts to distribute some of the weight that would normally go right at the point of my hip through the trunk of my body, through my torso, so that I don't have as much compression at the hip and the lower leg. And once again, this would be my sleeping position. I create something of a canal or a tunnel that my shoulder is resting in because I've got two pillows under my head, one pillow under my, my rib cage, and then a folded pillow between my knees. Now, if your surgeon has specifically said you are not allowed to lay on your side, then obviously we have to work on, okay, what's the best position for me relative to um, keeping the knee extended the best I can while keeping it elevated. So that's where you're going to get into a situation where, yes, in an ideal world, we would have full knee extension, zero degrees range of motion, right? But most of us don't live in that world. Most of us have, we're lacking eight, 10, 15 degrees of extension. It hurts to be in that position for a prolonged period. So most often what I'll do, if I don't have enough pillows to really get it elevated, I'll fold one pillow underneath where the, the calf and lower ankle is. I'll put a second pillow straight and that's gonna be my wedge that I'll be sleeping on. And so then my other leg comes up, I lay back, I'm out of bed behind me here. But this will be my sleeping posture. While there is still some support under the knee, the knee is relatively straight and the ankle and calf is higher than the hip. That's the ultimate goal, right? Now, if you see my other videos, and I'll try and post them up above, Basically, we, we try to get the hip at about 45 degrees or higher to reduce swelling, improve that venous return and lymphatic drainage. But at the minimum, I fold over one pillow at the ankle. I place the second pillow longitudinally on top of the first pillow coming up under the thigh. And this typically will produce the most comfortable position if you've been told you have to sleep on your back. Very few people, but on occasion, I'll have somebody that's a stomach sleeper and they want to sleep on their stomach. Now, the main thing with sleeping on your stomach is that obviously that prolonged extension, like we do exercises to improve extension by having you lay on your stomach, but sometimes that prolonged extension is just too much. So the way we address it is we get a pillow. These are super flat pillows. They're only a couple inches tall, so I'd probably end up folding it over. I'm gonna try and get into position here. And so now I've got a little bit of support under the shin and the ankle, and I can sleep in my stomach sleeping position. You know, so any position can be accommodated. The most important thing is that you get good quality sleep. The quality of your sleep trumps just about everything else. That is assuming that you're working on your range of motion during the day, you're doing your physical therapy exercises, you're going to therapy, getting measurements. You know, there's a whole kind of protocol that needs to be followed. 
but I guarantee that if you get good quality sleep, you get good quality food, you minimize the stressors in your life during recovery, you are going to do amazingly well. Okay? So guys, Tony Maritato again. That's my name. I'm a physical therapist here in Middletown, Ohio. If you have any questions, thoughts, concerns, if you're like, oh, that's terrible. I can't believe that he said that. Post them in the comments to the YouTube video. Let me know what you guys are thinking. The more you engage with me, the better I have, better information I have to provide you with the videos you need to see. In the meantime, if you're not part of the Facebook group, we have a free Facebook group. It's a closed group. It's called the Total Knee, Total Knee Replacement Support Group 2018 and 19. Go on Facebook, check it out. Um, but in the meantime, guys, subscribe to the channel. I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.